Okay, what were we talking about? Yeah. Um, yeah. Two. Okay, how do we find angle A? We've been on this for like five minutes. Yeah, tangent inverse. Inverse is the key. So relative to this angle, we have opposite adjacent, which is tangent. Tangent of the angle, which we don't know, equals opposite over adjacent. If you ever need to find the angle with trig, you have to do tangent inverse. So yes, you're right. What did that come out as? Didn't plug it in. 53.1, wasn't it? Something like that. Okay. Now, we could do something similar for angle B, but what's the much easier way to find angle B? Yeah, these should add up to 180. So if you do 180 minus 90 is 90, 90 minus 53.1 is 36.9, I think. Yeah. All right. So we did Pythagorean theorem, we did like tangent inverse to find the angle. What's different about number two? Two sides are going instead of two angles. Uh, well, yeah, we just have one angle on one side. So it's 38 degrees and 12.5. So we're missing angle B. So how do I find angle B? 90 minus 38. That's real quick. Okay. Uh, let's say side B. How would I find side B? Wouldn't it be 42? Where it's like... No, it should add up to 90. Isn't it where you put like uh, Opposite over adjacent? Okay, relative to this angle or this angle, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, if you're using this angle, it'd be opposite to the side we're looking for, adjacent to the side we know, which is tangent of 52 equals opposite over adjacent. So, how do we solve for B? Tangent of 52 times 12.5. We're like rounding into tenths place. Okay, um, how would we find side <coughs> C? Relative to this angle, we have adjacent, and we're looking for hypotenuse. So that would be cosine of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. How do we, what do we plug in when the variable is in the denominator? How do we do that? Switch these two. So C is equal to 12.5 divided by cosine 52. And that's that. So, why don't you guys try three and four and we'll check it in about five minutes. See if you can get it.
she chose, she was doing a safety roll. Every single safety roll. <laughs> <laughs> what? He ignores me now. Roll. Every time I try to talk to him, he just ignores me. It's <laughs> probably a good policy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not on Bill's level, so. I just said three and four. What'd you guys get for side BC on number three? Square root of five or 2.2. 2. Uh, angle A? Uh, 48.2. 48.2 and then 90 minus that would be angle B. 41.8. Okay, uh, number four. Let's see, what'd you guys get for, well, angle B would be 90 minus 59, 31. How about side AC? 8.2. You could use cosine of 59 to get that. Cosine of 59. Uh, and then what's side BC? 13.7. Okay, let's jump down to the graphs at the bottom. Um, number one, what did the cosine graph look like? Cosine starts, starts at the top. So what is that three? Remember sine and cosine, they both look like waves, right? That's what we do. Um, so the cosine wave starts at the top. What does that three in front of the cosine do to the graph? Okay, it's the amplitude. It means it's going to go up to 3 and it's going to go down to negative 3. And then, uh, let's see, what's, there's a 2 right there. What is that 2 going to do to the graph? Okay, what's normally the period on a cosine sine graph? 2 pi is the normal period, but if there's a number in front of the angle, the variable, you divide by that number. So this one, the period's going to be pi. That means by the time it gets to pi, it should be back to the like back to the top again. Yeah. So this would be pi over two. You know. I think on the graph they kind of already labeled all these for us. So, so remember, we just kind of put dots in there, like. Starts at the top, then goes to the middle, then goes to the bottom, then goes to the middle, then goes to the top, and then we just kind of connect it up. Difference with sign. Starts, uh, starts, from, starts the in the middle, going up. 
So if it was a sine graph, it would have looked like this. Anyways. Uh, the next one is a bit of a mess because they didn't. Anyways. Um, Still a cosine. I wish let's let's do a sine graph just to practice it. We'll say it's sine of three theta. Okay, so what's that what's the amplitude gonna be? Right. Since there's no number in front of the sine, that means it's gonna just go up to one. one. Alright. Um, the period is different, but the graph they didn't change the graph. So put pi out there. So, um, what is the period going to be on this one? Yeah. Right, which is like two thirds pi. So that means if it's sine, remember sine starts in the middle going up. So where is it going to be back to the middle going up again? Well, at two thirds. This is pi, where would two thirds be? Um, be between one half and three fourths. Two thirds is like 67%. It's a pretty rough guesstimate, but that's about, that's where it would be. So that means we need to get through our period by this point. So at the halfway point, what's half of two thirds? It'd be like one third, It'd be like right there. Um, anyway, we can kind of do a rough sketch with that. Yeah, I kind of missed. Oops, messed up. All right. How do we convert? I probably just want to do the even ones. Uh, odds. 255. How do we convert degrees to radians? This would be a good enough to take, probably. Uh, 180 over 5? Close. Over 180. Multiplier. You have to divide out the degrees, multiply in the radians. And, uh, Basically, you should always get pi in your answer, and you're kind of just reducing the 255 to 180. So, if you don't have a great calculator, you can just use it to reduce that fraction. I don't know if I remember what it was. Divide by, I think you can divide by 15. Is it like 17 over 12 or something? Yeah, 12 over the of pi. 17 pi over 12. Oh, I'm leaving you in the fraction. Yes. So what did that do? We converted, okay, you guys remember 180 degrees equals how many radians? Pi, you guys remember radians? Yes. 180 degrees equals 3.14 radians, or pi radians. Um, okay, it's just another way of measuring like angles. Uh, so, uh, and then the number three says turn this into degrees. Remember how we turn it into degrees? We replace the pi with 180. And uh, that would do it. Don't forget the negative. Negative five two. Become one. What the heck? Up. I had been really bad Friday after school. Were you anxious?
Okay. Uh, can we reach you? We can probably skip that. We just did it. 13. Uh, state what quadrant it would be in. How could we figure out what quadrant? You guys remember the quadrants? One, two, three, four. Okay, how many degrees was this right here? 90. Remember it starts right here on the positive X and we rotate it that way. So it was 90, 180, 270, 360, also zero and 360. And then it just keeps going and they go and they keep, keep wrapping around. Um, so I would, and there is a, there is a radians version of this, but it's a little more complicated and harder to remember. So I would probably just convert that into degrees and then figure out where it is on this. What, how many degrees is that? It's 480. 8 times 180 divided by 3 is 4, 480? Yeah. Okay, now 480 would go around the circle more than, and then some. How far past 360 is 480? 120. So it'd be 120 degrees past, so that goes past 90, 30 degrees, so it'd look about like that. So what quadrant is it in? Two. Two. Remember we had to draw it a lot of times, and then find the reference angle. You guys remember how we found the reference angle? Like basically we figured out what the angle was between 180 or the x-axis, how far it was from the x-axis. So how far is 120 away from 180? 60. So that's the reference angle. Okay, on 14, I do want to look at that one, negative 10 pi over 9. Let's see, that would be... Negative 200 degrees. So if it's negative 200, well, where is that going to be? Backwards. We're going backwards. So what quadrant would it end up in? Uh, yeah, 180 and negative 180 are kind of the same thing. So it does end up in the second quadrant again, just 20 degrees past. All right, we're almost done. Almost done. Okay, on number 15, are they going backwards or forwards on that angle? Backwards. They're going backwards. And we're supposed to figure out how many, what the measure of the angle is. They don't really specify degrees or radians. I would probably do it in radians. But notice they went around twice, plus a little bit more. So what's a full rotation in radians? 360 in radians is? 2 pi. 2 pi. So they went 2 pi plus 2 pi plus 1 fourth pi or pi over 4. And it's basically like 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 1 fourth. It's like 4 and 1 fourth pi or 17 pi over 4. Uh, if they don't tell you degrees, I guess you could. They don't tell you, I guess you can do it in degrees also. This would be 180 divided by 4, it'd be like 45 degrees. So you can do 360 plus 360 plus 45. Oh, I didn't do something wrong. Yeah. They went backwards, so I should have thrown a negative in there. Okay, let's do. 17, and we'll call it good. Um, I would start by converting it, just kind of like we did on 13. I'd start by converting it to degrees. So what's 31 pi over 18 in degrees? Looks like Shrek's standing like this. Come at me, bro. Huh? 310. Okay, so where is 310 going to be? It's going to be 50 short of 360. 
So that's about right there. Yeah, yeah. 